recording and record keeping certainly isn't the most fun topic, but these important issues are an essential part of OSHA compliance. As you continue with me here, you'll learn all about how to keep records for OSHA while respecting employee privacy. To begin with, OSHA has three forms for recording injury and illness. The OSHA Form 300, which is the log of work-related injuries and illnesses, also called the OSHA 300 log or OSHA log. The OSHA Form 300A, which is a summary of work-related injuries and illnesses, and the OSHA Form 301, the Injury and Illness Incident Report. These forms and their instructions are available for download on OSHA's website, but it can be helpful to note that employers are allowed to use equivalent forms. Just be sure the forms contain the same information and are just as readable and understandable as the OSHA forms. In terms of storing these forms, OSHA allows employers to store them electronically as long as you can produce them upon request. Now, when a recordable illness or injury occurs, employers must complete Form 300 and Form 301 within seven days of receiving information about the illness or injury. It's fairly straightforward. You'll simply fill in the blanks to provide company information and a description of injury or illness. Let's begin by digging a bit deeper into the requirements of Form 300. Form 300 is a log of all recordable injuries and illnesses. It has four check boxes that are used for classification purposes. Death, days away from work, job transfer or restriction, and other recordable cases. It's essential to know that when completing the Form 300, you can check only one of these four options. So, if more than one apply, always check the most severe classification for that particular incident. For example, if the case was originally entered as days away from work, but the employee later required a job restriction or accommodation, you must update the form by striking through days away from work and checking job transfer or restriction. Form 301 captures more information about a specific injury or illness. You'll have to record how long the employee has worked in the industry, what time the employee started work, what time the injury or illness occurred, and other important details. Again, filling out this form is fairly self-explanatory. Just remember to include all the important details. Don't leave anything out. Now, let's talk about Form 300A. This form is completed at the end of every calendar year. It provides a high-level summary of the number of recorded cases, days away from work, and job transfers and restrictions for the year. And it also tallies the number of injuries, skin disorders, respiratory conditions, poisonings, hearing losses, and other illnesses for the year. OSHA uses this form to compare companies' data to the national average and to determine if additional protections or guidelines might be needed. Beyond simply filling out and filing the form, Form 300A must be reviewed, corrected, and certified by the employer, then posted on-site for three months. So this means, for example, that the certified summary for 2016 must be posted on-site from February 1, 2017 to April 30, 2017. Before we wrap up, I need to address privacy concerns. Now, if an employee cites concerns regarding reporting their injury or illness, OSHA has accommodations for these concerns. For example, in some instances, you may not need to enter the employee's name on the OSHA 300 log. These instances include an injury or illness to an intimate body part or reproductive system, an injury or illness resulting from sexual assault, mental illness, HIV infection, tuberculosis diagnosis, hepatitis diagnosis, needle stick or other sharp injuries, or when the employee voluntarily requests for their name to be kept off the OSHA 300 log. In these circumstances, you can simply enter privacy case in the name column on Form 300. If the employee's identity can be determined by the details of the injury, the employer must use some discretion when describing the case. For example, an injury to a reproductive organ could be entered as lower abdominal injury. OSHA just requires that enough information be entered on Form 300 to identify the cause and severity of the injury. Employers are not required to divulge intimate details of privacy cases. Of course, employers are required to keep a separate confidential list of privacy case numbers and employee names for record keeping purposes. Finally, I want to let you know about two more important OSHA requirements. First, injury and illness records must be maintained for at least five years. During this time, Form 300 must be continually updated with any cases that are newly discovered or have changed status. And it's essential to note that employers that are required to routinely keep injury and illness records must electronically submit the information collected on OSHA Forms 300, 301, and 300A, or just Form 300A for establishments with 250 or more employees. If you're unsure about your reporting requirements, check with an OSHA representative today.